the record button. So hi, everybody. Um, welcome to those who are returners. It's fun to see, um, you know, some, some returning faces. It's fun to see some new people. So welcome to those who are um, new to the sessions. Um, I am Kelly Robinson, Assistant Director in the Center for Career Development, joined by Jane Zimmerman, who's the Director of the Dean Rusk um, Center for International Studies. And we have been doing a series that has been focused on international job searching, but I think we'll find that today's uh, program especially, and Thursday's program, um, while have that international job focus, just have that professional development focus. Um, um, so we're going to be talking about LinkedIn. A um, couple of housekeeping items. I am recording the session, so don't worry about having to furiously take notes, although feel free. Um, I will be sending out the recording to everybody who is in attendance today. Feel free to post questions in the chat as you go. Um, there is no expected level of knowledge with respect to LinkedIn. Um, you know, so if you are a LinkedIn newbie or you are a LinkedIn guru, um, hoping that you'll get something out of this presentation today. I know that with Jane leading, you definitely will. I have posted and I'll keep posting in the chat um, the sign-in sheet that we've been having for these series. So please be sure to sign that uh, Google Doc so that we know that you were here, that we can get your information to you, okay? Um, so with that said, uh, Jane, I will turn it over to you and let's let's leverage LinkedIn. Terrific. Okay, well with that, I'll go ahead and jump into it and I'll share my screen. And I'm just gonna make sure I have everything optimized here. All right. So as we said, this is uh, session three of um, the workshop that Kelly and I uh, ginned up on international job search. And part of it was because, um, one, I had such a wonderful uh, international career, really loved it, and I'm so fortunate to be able to continue it at, by working at Davidson. But I had so many students who were interested in, as well, in international careers, whether based here or in the US. So I really, and I found myself giving a lot of the same advice, including with regards to LinkedIn. So when Kelly and I started putting our heads together and realized that we were often saying the same things to folks, uh, we thought we'd team up and also kind of look at some of the things that are, are unique about an international job search um, and how you can leverage LinkedIn. There we go. So, yes, you do need a LinkedIn account and profile. Um, whether you're looking at a career overseas or in the US. Uh, this slide is the most recent I could find. Um, it's only a few months old, and I'm sure it's already outdated. Uh, LinkedIn is growing by leaps and bounds, not just in the United States, where you know, it started where you have many adopters, but throughout the world, um, in so many different countries. And uh, you'll find that also LinkedIn is often optimized in Google searches, so that when you try to Google somebody or their name, often their LinkedIn profile is what comes up. Now, I do a lot of also uh, peer counseling. Um, friends of mine who've you know, got careers of you know, 30, 40 years, as well as uh, students and um, interns and other people I mentor. And so let me just go over some of the benefits of developing a LinkedIn profile. You get to tell the world who you are. And to that extent, you get to control the message. Um, one of the first things people do when they're interested in looking at you or do they want to invite you for an interview or talk to you, is they'll often, do, they'll often Google you. So if you Google my name, one of the things that comes up is janezerman.com. And I assure you, I am not a needlework designer. <laughs> I wish I had that talent. But thankfully, the other person out there who comes up in a lot of searches uh, regarding Jane Zimmerman is a needlework designer. I remember one time I was interviewing, uh, preparing to interview a candidate who um, uh, had the same name as a famous rapper, Danger Mouse. Uh, and so it was interesting because I said, do you happen to know you have the same name as Danger Mouse? And he says, yes, that's why I use my middle initial. So it's always good to kind of Google yourself and you can also do an incognito um, search on uh, Google. That is where you kind of get rid of your cookies so it doesn't automatically favor you coming on. But that's the neat thing about LinkedIn is it kind of automatically tells people who you are and lends a certain air of you know, legitimacy. Um, and so you know that you're looking at Jane Zimmerman at Davidson College and not the needlework um, designer. 
uh, employers and your network will see what your goals are, your professional goals, your interests, your experience, um, all the things that you've accomplished, recommendations, which I can talk a little bit more about uh, later on, and who your other connections are, which is really valuable when you go to a college like Davidson where the alumni are so um, supportive of paying it forward. I use LinkedIn, as other people do, as a research tool all the time, whether I want to look up specific individuals or organizations that I'm really interested in, or just to stay on top of various interests. For instance, I belong to a LinkedIn group of former Foreign Service officers who are now in higher education. We share all sorts of advice, experience all the time, and they often refer me to great resources. Excuse me. You can follow those organizations, thought leaders, um, and issues of interest to you. So, uh, for instance, one of my interests is protection of cultural heritage. I actually get a lot of really good material from LinkedIn on that subject. Like I mentioned, joining LinkedIn groups, especially there's so many Davidson uh, LinkedIn groups. Davidson in DC, Davidson alumni, Davidson International Affairs. Um, but there are other groups that you can join as well uh, that uh, are really beneficial. Like I said, you can, it allows you to expand your network from other students and alumni to people in your field. Um, and also it can alert you to various events, webinars, workshops, think tank uh, discussions that are going on. It gives you a chance to ask questions, start conversations, and get engaged. And I'd encourage you to do that. Um, you do have to put yourself out there when uh, you're looking for an internship or a job search. Best of all, and this is where my motivation comes in, it makes it really easy for me and your other contacts to introduce and recommend you. So I had two students, actually more than two, I had several students this summer where um, uh, it was very easy. I knew that they would fit really well with specific uh, internship opportunities. And fortunately, they both had great LinkedIn profiles. You'll see them later on. All I had to do was insert a hyperlink to my contact with their LinkedIn profile. And it also was a good memory jogger for me about this is why you so-and-so would be a great fit for this position. The basic elements of a LinkedIn profile. Um, select a profile photo. photo. Um, and you can consider trying this uh, kind of interesting program called Photo Feeler, uh, where if you have several different headshots or f pictures of yourself and you're wondering like which might be most appropriate for you know, LinkedIn or a professional shot, including like what you can add on to Zoom. You can upload your photo and you comment on other people's photos. Now, people use this for um, uh, business, which is what I used it for, or their social media and even dating profiles. I've been married for over 23 years, so I have no comment about dating profiles. But, you know, it is really interesting to kind of see and get feedback on what people think of how you present yourself in a professional format like that. Um, so I can do this again. All right. By the way, this is my first animated uh, slide presentation. So this just goes to show we are all learning new things um, as we go along in life. Um, so lean into it. Uh, I also like to say that aside from the profile photo, choose a really nice background image like you would see on your Facebook or Twitter profiles or other, or, um, other social media profiles, Instagram. Uh, you'll see that my, maybe you can see here, the background I've used on this slide is kind of that yucky default uh, blue space that LinkedIn has. When I see someone who has a really nice headshot, but they've left that kind of yucky blue there, I think, well, they're halfway there. You know, go ahead and use that space and we'll see some examples later on. This is really important and something I saw even on really great uh, resumes and uh, material that uh, students shared with me. They didn't have the customized URL in LinkedIn. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you can even Google how to do it and LinkedIn will tell you, but basically you can set up a, a shortcut uh, in LinkedIn where it'll be, you know, linkedin.com slash in slash your name. So for me, Jane Zimmerman was a pretty common name. So mine had to be, as you'll see in the URL here, uh, linkedin.com slash in Jane hyphen Zimmerman because there are other Jane Zimmermans out there with just one word or the dot or whatever. But you can see here where I use that picture of chambers and the sun coming over it to tell people I work at Davidson College. And this headshot is one that actually um, 
was done for me when we were going through a big layoff uh, at the Red Cross when I worked there. Uh, one thing that was really nice was they set up free headshots for everybody. And I know that um, you don't have to always have the professional headshot. There are other ways to kind of express yourself. But for me, in my age, in my position, I had to look for something professional, but I also wanted something warm. All right. Make sure that you provide in your LinkedIn profile your contact information, your email address, website, blog, or social media handle. Um, any place you want people to find you, where you want to kind of drive them to it. Um, you know, maybe you have a Davidson domain, for example. Uh, but make it easy. It's interesting. Com uh, recruiters often complain, or um, people who are doing the job searches on LinkedIn to try to find candidates, uh, also known as headhunters, uh, often get frustrated because people haven't included that information there. Uh, you know. I I had someone who wanted to hire me for a short-term consultancy. They found me on LinkedIn. They're able to contact me right away and they needed someone on short notice. So it worked out great. The about section, you know, tell people, this is a great opportunity to tell people who you are, what your professional goals are, what your value proposition is. And I know that sounds a bit like a cliche, but of all the people who are interested in this job, why you, you know, so what that you're interested in uh, refugees? Tell me that what you're really interested in about you know, refugees, assistance, resettlement, um, helping them in your own community. There are all different ways that you can kind of explain what you have to offer here. We'll see, again, some examples later on. Uh, more on the basic elements. LinkedIn is so much like a resume, but it's actually more than that. Um, some people like to create a resume first and then go on to LinkedIn. I really liked creating my LinkedIn profile first because I could put so much into it and then kind of edit down to having a really uh, concise, tight resume. Uh, but it's a great way to talk about your accomplishments and the impact you've had. Quantify. Everybody loves numbers and metrics, whether that's money and maybe it's something you raised for a student organization or um, uh, maybe your uh, fraternity or eating house. People, how many people did you reach out and uh, touch? Did you organize an event that attracted a lot of other students on campus? Event management is often something that, whether online or in person, is something that a lot of entry level positions and internships are looking for. People who can coordinate others and hours. I really encourage people to track the hours when they're volunteering or interning or not being paid um, because you can actually attach a value to that and it also shows your level of dedication. Uh, I actually helped a group of George Washington University students when I was at the Red Cross who did this huge refugee simulation. Uh, as a nonprofit, we put a value at the Red Cross of $20 an hour on each volunteer hour. That was an incredible metric to show the impact of this refugee simulation and conference they hosted. Um, and I think a lot, and I know a lot of them still have it on their resumes. I actually have it on mine. You can also highlight the skills you have. Um, foreign languages, especially for an international job search to you know, software that you're comfortable with. Um, and never underestimate, there are a lot of people out there who don't know how to use Microsoft Office Suite or um, all the programs that Google offers. Um, there, we're gonna see some examples of students who put courses on there that really related to their interests. Certifications, maybe you've gotten a, a particular certification in something, um, whether it's something like project management or a software certification, but even if you've learned something like life-saving or CPR, uh, it's worth putting in there. And again, Kelly and I have said it many times and I'll continue saying it, feature your volunteer experience. It's really important. And I would also encourage you to be you know, lifelong volunteers. Um, more elements, I'm getting down to the last of it here. Use the multimedia capabilities of LinkedIn. We'll see some examples of that. You can also look at my LinkedIn profile because I put in some videos and other clips there. Again, you can put in your Davidson domain, videos, photos, if you've done a podcast or blog. This is really interesting. Um, more and more the job market is being driven by algorithms. And one piece of advice I saw was updating your status as often as once a week if you're job seeking. That can often be a happy to glad type of edit or change. Uh, 
or maybe breaking up a, a compound sentence into two sentences, but it helps trigger the algorithms to know that you're actively editing your profile and from what I understand bumps you up higher. I should add, I've been attending a lot of uh, job and networking things this summer, mostly so I can make sure that my skills stay fresh and I can best advise you. And I've been doing it with a focus on, on international sector. Um, this was really interesting. Another piece of advice I saw, include a current job entry even if you're unemployed. And the answer is that most recruiting professionals use the current title box to search for candidates. So for example, when I came up as a consultancy, um, uh, it was as I was preparing to exit another job and I had flagged um, LinkedIn and at that time I was using premium uh, that I was interested in job searching. So I came up but they saw that my current job related to the consultancy that uh, they needed. Um, but they had some examples, for instance, seeking a new opportunity, for instance, to serve and assist refugees and migrants. You can kind of fill in that blank with whatever it is that you're interested in. And that's not lying, it's being honest, but it shows that that's your current status. And that will help you in terms of when people are searching on LinkedIn for positions they want to fill. Um, now, I was very fortunate there, there were some students who had really great LinkedIn profiles and I asked them if I could uh, brag about them a little bit here. Um, so I know Alex Stimek is here and he was one of the first I saw where, um, when Alec came to me about, uh, opportunities this summer, he made it so easy because I automatically saw that he had a really great LinkedIn profile. Um, so let me just show you a few things. He's got an internship at Hands Along the Nile, uh, where I recommended him um, for an internship. I put in the hyperlink to his LinkedIn profile and sent it to the executive director there and said, you know, Alec is really interested in the Middle East. Um, you know, he's been involved with uh, Dean Russ Global Core events and um, take a look because I think you'll see his background fits really well. He's clearly, he's got a nice profile photo, nicely identifies himself as a, as a wildcat, and a, a lovely photo of Davidson there. And of course he notes right here, right up front, you can see he's a student at Davidson College and that he's a Belk Scholar. That's great, he hasn't made me search or look for that or just come across by scrolling down. It's the first thing I see. Um, he also did a really good job of using the about section. So he says here about how he's a current student, um, where he went to high school in, in Cleveland, and his interest in international affairs, foreign service, also data science and government. Um, and then uh, talked about what he's currently doing with Hands Along the Nile and also the Ilesan Group on Public Democracy, which uh, Alec can correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but that was also an opportunity that was created by a Davidson alumnus. Um, so I keep saying it over and over again, and we'll, you'll hear more of it on Thursday, use that alumni network. Um, I also see some of his recent activity here. It's all good and nice and, and clean, but I see here that he's, you know, congratulating some of his colleagues, which shows me that he's someone who really cares about other people and is willing to take the time to share those kinds of, you know, uh, um, to boost others. Because a lot of times what employers are looking for are people who are going to be really great and take individual initiative and work really hard, but also who are going to fit in really well as part of a team. So here he's got his internships noted, and I can tell like what kind of organization he's working for with Hands Along the Nile. And I can see what he's responsible for, the newsletter, um, also his other internship, uh, how he's using um, data. So it tells me that he's data savvy. Um, and uh, um, also then I can see farther down in his background that he's been working uh, with a congressional representative in the district office um, and has definitely a lot of interest in uh, politics. Um, so if he's looking for an internship or a position, I'm sure also that the people at Amazon um, picked up on this as well. And he also has his volunteer experience here. Um, so youth leadership, um, a leadership student. Uh, so he, you can see the various things he's been involved in. Um, camp counselor, uh, you know, mission trips, really cares about human rights. He went to Guatemala. Um, so all these things, like he's gotten me interested. So I've kept scrolling down. Whereas, but the real thing is that he grabbed me at that top headline part. And then he has here courses that are relevant to um, the positions that he is pursuing. He put in his honors and awards here, um, his languages. So for example, 
if I were Jennifer Kate, the executive director at Hands Along the Nile, I might scroll down really quickly to the election languages part and see here, ah, okay, he's studying Arabic. That's really great. Um, and then it's interesting, he's got his uh, Hume, uh, Hume's project here. And he's also listed some of his other interests. He's following the US State Department, so I know he's serious about the Foreign Service, Council on Foreign Relations, and others. So, but again, this is where he really um, grabbed me and any prospective employer. It's on that first screenshot you're gonna have because people are going through a lot of profiles. Kaiza Arani also did a really great uh, profile. Again, terrific headshot. Um, uh, a lovely uh, picture of you know, the lawn outside chambers. Um, I can see right off the bat where he's working. So Alliance for Peace Building. Uh, a friend of mine there said, look, I, I desperately need an internship intern who's data savvy. I don't want to put it out and have to go through the whole interviewing thing. She said, I, I know you've got some really great students who keep talking about them all the time. And so I put out something on the Dean Rusk uh, happenings group saying, hey, here's this position, anyone interested? People sent me their resumes. Also, um, I could see who was in on LinkedIn. And when I wrote back my friend, I included not only the resumes, but hyperlinks to their LinkedIn profiles. And um, Kaizad uh, really stood out. You can see he's political science, econ. Um, you can tell where he's uh, going to college and where he's interning this summer. And again, he has a really good section here introducing himself. Noting that he's a rising junior, so he's gonna wanna update that once uh, cl uh, classes start this fall. But this was perfect for you know summer internship, um, talking about his double major. Uh, but he also includes right here up front, so I don't have to go looking for it down in the skills section. He's got these really great data skills like R, Stata, Excel, which is exactly what was needed uh, at Alliance for Peace Building right now. And he's worked at a GitHub consultant. Now, don't worry if you're not a data science major or minor. There are all sorts of opportunities out there. Um, but this gives you an idea that he had particular interests matched with certain skills that made him a really attractive candidate for this opportunity. And then he also noted that he's here part of uh, the uh, Chidsey Center for Leadership Development, that he works on the school newspaper on the Davidsonian. Um, and he talks about what he's doing this summer uh, and talks about Alliance for Peace Building. So again, a lot of really, and some of his other past research, so a lot of really great information there. This is really nice, right? He's writing for the Davidsonian. So he's put in here, you know, uh, one of his articles. And here he's added a research project that he was working on. And again, you can kind of see, okay, his summer internship at Alliance for Peace Building. You can tell right off the fact that he's a Boston Red Sox fan. Um, me personally, I do not connect with people over sports, but many, many, many people do. Uh, and I'm almost convinced that you cannot be a woman working at the White House unless you were a point guard on your high school basketball team, but that's another story. Uh, let's see. And again, you know, talks about what his work at Davidson, what he's been doing um, as a gig hub consultant, and also that he's been using the makerspace at Davidson. So, but he's a polycon major, so he's telling me that he's marrying skills with also his academic and intellectual interests. Um, and always great when you see someone who's kind of done counseling and mentoring. As I said, uh, even in previous seminars here, it's not just about how great you are, it's about how you make other people great. Um, and by the way, someone who's been like a counter attendant at a cinema, that's great. I mean, I would not put my experience uh, doing anything like that because I've been in the workforce for 37 years. But this is great. This tells me he knows customer service. So don't ever play down some of the other skills that you've had. Um, some that are really typical of summer jobs, especially in a tight market, whether it's camp counselor, working in a movie theater, retail, food service. One of the best hires I ever made was someone who was uh, at that time an unpaid intern. Um, she's now uh, about to become a senior uh, foreign service officer. Uh, but as a, my summer unpaid intern, she talked about her waitressing skills in New York while she was in college. But she linked all those skills of being able to prioritize, uh, focus on customer needs, make sure that, you know, uh, uh, problems were dealt with quickly and, you know, not necessarily falling apart in front of others. 
I'd worked in food service as well. I immediately identified with her and, I, and she didn't embellish or um, lie about anything. She just connected her skills to what I needed in a very fast paced work environment. And again, you can see a little bit more about um, Kaizad uh, you know, Davidson and uh, Rockbridge County. Um, he's been endorsed for leadership. He's noted his skills with R and writing. And again, he put in some of the courses here, uh, some of his honors and awards, um, uh, and some of the pro uh, projects that he's worked on. He's also signified here like he's interested in Deloitte. We also know he's a Red Sox fan and he's interested in baseball, his fraternity, Chidsey, and um, some of the work he did at W uh, Washington and Lee, which I know is now changing its name, but I don't know to what. Um, Rebecca Contreras. So actually, I met Rebecca through um, the Public Leadership Education Network, or PLAN, um, I believe. Let me see. No, I'm sorry. So, my apologies. Uh, Rebecca is a Davidson alumna. And she's interning now um, at the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. But I was able to work with and help her on a number of things. So look, she's done this really interesting kind of badge here, like open to work. Um, she's got a great photo that kind of shows her international interests and background in Latin America. Um, and uh, she's highlighted some of her skills here and job locations. Um, she's noted that she's, you know, actively applying. And then um, she also has a really great section here, who she's about, what she's done. And look at this. She included her Gmail right there right up front. So I don't have to go into um, LinkedIn messaging in order to reach out to her and say, hey, Rebecca, um, I have an opportunity. I think you'd be a great fit. That was a really great move on her part. I've seen some of the things that she's involved in. Um, I can see she's staying active in her field, doing webinars um, and uh, reading materials and engaging and interacting with people. So you can also flip on and see more of kind of the activities that she's interested in and who she's following. Her experience as an internship, she was a research assistant to Dr. Crandall. She's worked as an interpreter at a health clinic. So again, it keeps coming across that she has very much this um, public service uh, um, volunteer spirit. She really cares about others and she's bilingual. Uh, which is fantastic. She knows how to do research. Uh, there's a lot here that would really appeal to people in the nonprofit sector, international sector, um, and some of the various things that she's worked on, some for the Americas, volunteer. So everybody has a different profile, but look, she's got three languages. That's great. English, French, and Spanish. She got the Latin American Studies Prize, and some of the projects that she's worked on regarding, you know, migration. There's so many groups now looking for help uh, with migration in almost every community, and all, both on this side of the border and the other side of the border. Um, and you can see some of the people whom she's following, the Carter Center. So again, a really great profile. And then I mentioned uh, before for Davidson Undergraduate Women, the Public Leadership Education Network, or PLAN. Um, I've been volunteering with them for about six years. And that's how I met uh, Maria Furtado. And she's a rising junior at Chapel Hill. I think it's also helpful for you to see kind of what other students at other colleges and universities may look like. So um, I was on a panel with Bonnie Jenkins uh, volunteering with PLAN, Ambassador Bonnie Jenkins, who's phen phenomenal. She founded the Women of Color Advancing Peace and Security where you don't just have to be a woman, they, they are happy to have allies to help with them as well. Um, but it's ge geared towards supporting uh, women of color um, in peace and security sector. And so Maria was at PLEN, she was on the panel where I met Bonnie and then Bonnie and I became connected and turned out we knew a bunch of people in common. So, you know, networking in the time of quarantine. And then Maria notes that she's an undergraduate, double majoring in public policy and global studies. Um, with a minor in social and economic justice. She tells me what her interests are. Um, and then she states a really great kind of value here. By empowering one another, I believe that communities can create innovative solutions to overcome barriers and disparities. 
So this again tells me someone who's very community focused and really wants to work as part of a team. Um, here she highlights a project she had on the death penalty and where she created an infographic. That's really neat. It tells me she's um, interested in a very specific issue and she's found an innovative way to um, convey that information. I will say for those of you who are not feeling very confident with your digital skills or data skills, you have a tremendous resource at Davidson in terms of the hub and the Digital Learning Institute to pick up some of these things. Um, again, you know, she's shouting out to uh, friends of hers who, you know, are succeed, who are being successful and she's invested in their success. And she's done a really great job here showing what her background is. Um, she's interning the summer at the African American Policy Forum. And then she's uh, a Bonner Scholar um, where she's interned, a Brazilian student organization. And you can tell she's at Chapel Hill where she went to high school. Oh, she was a Girl Scout troop leader. Wow. Um, and uh, all the other kinds of things that she has, has done here. So you can kind of get a good picture of, of who Maria is. Okay, and then last, um, you guys can kind of pick apart mine if you want. Now, your profile is never going to look anything like mine until you've also put about, you know, 35 or more years into the workforce. But again, I have the shortened URL. I have the picture of Davidson, which kind of says where I'm working, my headshot, my title. Um, tells you I'm at Davidson College now. Tufts, for whatever reason, it does not show my undergraduate, which was at McAllister. Hmm. I'm not telling recruiters I'm open to work because I'm very happy where I am. <laughs> but I talk here about you know, what I do as the Dean Rusk Director. And I talk about Davidson College's mission and why I care about it. And then because I do have a longer work experience, you know, I go into some of what I did uh, prior to Davidson. Davidson did a nice article on me when I first joined last summer. So I have that included here. This talks about the work I did at the Red Cross. Um, it's a nice short video that people can click on if they wonder, well, you know, if they're interested in learning more about that. And I have others here from also where I was working previously for the American Research Center in Egypt. So I was able to embed some media in there. Uh, LinkedIn gives you a dashboard to tell you who's looking at your profile. Um, I do not have premium now because I'm very happy where I am, uh, but uh, it gives an idea of how often my, I'm coming up in terms of searches. Uh, salary insights, you can also use things like that in Glassdoor, but also tells you, you know, a bit of some of the activity um, that, you know, I posted just yesterday um, how much I care about uh, international students and then being able to come to the U.S. and remi or remain in the U.S. even if colleges have to go online. Um, so it tells you a bit about what I'm interested in. Also, you know, uh, justice and equality, advancing um, uh, opportunities uh, for diversity and people of color. And then even here in my experience, like so if you go into what I've done since I was here, I have a link to an article from when Ambassador Susan Rice came to Davidson in February. And I also have here um, a link to the Dean Rusk International Studies Program. So again, this just kind of gives you an idea. I have my education here. Um, I have a certification in project management. I talk here about my volunteer experience. Um, if any of you were at the Student Health Center last year on a, a Monday or Wednesday, you may run into my dog, Pepper. She and I volunteer as part of a therapy dog team. Um, when I was job searching and interviewing, a lot of people asked me about my work with as a therapy dog volunteer. Um, it was great. I, I can easily relate that to you know, my work and interest in serving others. And where I've been a mentor and volunteer since, okay, 2015 with the Public Leadership Education Network. I'm on the board of an archaeological research center. Um, and then let me just go down to recommendations. Uh, one of the things that would be really nice if you do have a job or internship this summer is ask your colleagues there to put a recommendation for you on LinkedIn. Um, uh, you can see I've given 15, I've received 34, but it's really helpful to kind of validate what people um, uh, think of you and what you've brought to the workspace. And I know that, you know, when I was interviewing at Davidson, this was something that people really cared about. And again, some of the honors awards. I have my languages here, organizations in which I'm actively involved. 
Um, anyway, enough about that. You can, you're welcome. If you picked out anything that needs to be improved in my LinkedIn profile, please do, please let me know. All right. And with that, just some other helpful resources. Like I mentioned, LinkedIn, these overall in terms of your job search. The Muse. Um, I may have mentioned, I think, the, uh, during our first session, uh, the co-founder of The Muse, who was named as a Forbes 30 under 30, um, back when she founded it, a few years after she founded it, was my former intern at a U.S. embassy. So um, uh, I think it's a great site. It's geared a lot towards um, entry and mid-level people, but there's a lot of good job information there. And I actually checked The Muse for their advice on how to leverage LinkedIn and pulled some great ideas from there. Uh, photo feeler, which I mentioned, kind of gives some, some interesting, you know, feedback in terms of, you know, if you're trying to pick which headshot. Big interview isn't something I've mentioned before, but it's a website where the part of it's behind a paywall, but like the most uh, common, like the 10 most common job uh, questions you get during an interview, you can see in front of the paywall without having to pay. Uh, and they give you a, a kind of a variety of the 10 things 10 most common um, questions, and it's especially helpful now when we're all kind of interviewing online. Uh, and you can actually record yourself giving an answer. Uh, and there, it's really helpful to see that. I looked at the video that Kelly sent around from, you know, when I uh, led the first session, and I realized, boy, I'm a face toucher. That must make people really nervous these days. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, Davidson Careers, uh, the Center for Career Development. The assistance you can get there in terms of resumes, building a LinkedIn profile, um, connecting through Handshake, recruiters, they have such great advice there. Keep in mind, there are people when they get out um, or farther out down in their careers will pay a lot of money to get the kind of services that you get through the Center for Career Development. Uh, our colleges and um, alma maters are really important. I, one of the uh, career workshops I attended just last week was one for my graduate school uh, through the Fletcher Women's Network at the Fletcher School at Tufts University. These are tremendous resources. Use Kelly and her colleagues and of course me as well. And with that, let me just leave it at questions and feedback. So there we go. And I will stop the screen share unless anyone wants to go back to certain slides. So, and I'm sorry, I have not been monitoring the chat questions yet just me posting and kind of agreeing and concurring and you know um so yes feel free you can post them or now that we're you know no longer sharing screens feel free to ask um any questions at all about things that jane talked about with regard to linkedin or even things that you know had a question about how to how to do this on linkedin etc hi laurie oh sorry you're adjusting your camera or did you have a question Oh, you're on mute, that's okay. I mean, I'll ask a question. Thanks. Um, I have a LinkedIn site and I've been looking at it while you were talking and it's all messed up. <laughs> and I guess I'll just have to go back and try to figure out, but I think there's some mechanical parts of this that I, I don't understand, but I guess I'm just gonna have to go back and try to figure it out. It, it's real hard to test what the public sees and what mm. you sign in and start noodling around in it. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's a... Yeah, let me just kind of show real quickly. Um, and, and I sympathize because I've been going through uh, a lot of, like I said, um, uh, online training myself. And I've even seen people who are really expert on Zoom kind of uh, uh, fuddling a little bit. So let me go ahead and open up, let me show you how to open a new tab so you can also search for yourself incognito. I'll, I'll show you both LinkedIn, but also if you see here, if you go over to these little dots over here on Google Drive, and I, I tend to use Google uh, Chrome as my main browser. Mm -hmm. but if you tap on those dots, you can also see a new incognito window. Hmm. And that kind of helps block out some of the cookies and things that will automatically kind of uh, show you about yourself. Um, so I set it on here to block third party cookies. Um, some activity might still be visible to the websites I visit or um, if I'm doing it from like here, this is a work computer um, as opposed to my personal laptop. Uh, whoever's monitoring my computer at Davidson could probably see that, I, you know, what I've done. 
But in any event, um, it kind of eliminates a lot of the other static, the cookies and site data, the browsing history and other things that, you know, is kind of being mined from you. Um, let me also kind of back out of that though, and just show you a little bit about some of the mechanics of LinkedIn, because, um, oops. We were having that same issue with things like uh, Moodle and Zoom. So for instance, oops, my notification's coming up. Um, it tends to automatically take you to your feed. So mm -hmm. I tend to start by browsing up here on this bar. Um, and if I go over to my headshot, me, I can get to my profile from here. Right. Or I can get to information about my profile from here, including who's viewed my profile, who's been, how many views I've had. But let's take a look at um, viewing my profile. And this is me going on editing. I can use this little, um, uh, that, sorry, that little pencil uh, is how I can edit. I could do things with um, zooming, cropping, filtering that photo, or changing the photo or deleting this photo. Often, if you just kind of tap on something, even something like my headshot, oh, there we go. I can reposition myself slightly. Um, oops, close those. Sorry, I forgot to set the do not uh, disturb or notifications thing. See, always something new to learn. Uh, I find that sometimes it's easy to upload uh, photos I want to use first to my computer, but there are other ways to kind of pull from your, your photo albums um, on your computer or the cloud. Um, but using these little editing pencils is really helpful. Yeah. And there we go. So if I wanted to put in more here, I could, or if I wanted to take one of these out, either change it or delete it. So that's kind of one way to get started. Um, LinkedIn itself has a lot of good tutorials because they want you to use their service. So that's one great way to start. Or again, you know, CCD can help. And like I said, I'm used to looking at people's LinkedIn profiles. And it is good to kind of see, um, you know, uh, what else is kind of popping up on your profile if people look at you. But I do like kind of occasionally going into that um, incognito mode so that I can kind of well, actually, I can do that again. Um, but going into incognito and like Googling yourself and even saying like LinkedIn Jane Zimmerman or LinkedIn Laura Stevenson and see what comes up. Because I think I mentioned just before we stick out on here, I tried looking for you on LinkedIn and I got a whole bunch of other Laura Stevensons. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was interesting. They were all good. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't you though, but they were all good. <laughs> well, one of them is really famous. A chemist, I think. One is really famous. Yeah, I, yeah, I think an academic, right? Who may be a no, chemistry scholar? Or? She's a singer. She's so, ah, okay. A um, uh, singer, and she's got a really. That's right. Yes, yes, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. So when you Google her, you'll get a ton of her stuff on that. But yeah. <laughs> Like I said, it is good to Google yourselves from time to time, especially incognito, just to see what comes up or who else on LinkedIn may have your name. Um, just because it kind of gives you an idea of how to differentiate yourself. Mm -hmm. Especially, the, and, and you know, Danger Mouse is a great rapper, but you know, he was not necessarily, didn't necessarily have the skills I needed to be analyzing foreign assistance budgets for Western Hemisphere. I had seen that um, we had a question in the chat um do you have any suggestions for connecting with people you have not spoken to in a while so i'm assuming that this means that this is somebody who you you know you're not connected with on linkedin you haven't reached out in a while um what's the approach for going about doing that i know i have thoughts but jane i'll i'll, I'll let you chime in first yeah actually that just happened to me last night um a fellow who was my intern eight years ago and now is inside the State Department and doing really well, but he's taking an executive leadership course and they wanted him to interview someone. He's like, hey, you know, Jane, I know we haven't talked in a while, but um, I'm taking this executive leadership course and I'd really like to, and I have to interview past, you know, supervisors. And he said, I'd really like to interview you. And so he sent me an email because he still had my email address. I was thrilled to hear from him. And what was nice is, he gave me, you know, he reached out again, 
Um, I would say one thing he did wrong was on the subject matter, he put high. So all of a sudden I get nervous that someone is um, spamming or has hijacked someone's account. So um, it's always nice to put in something like, uh, hi Jane, reconnecting here or something like that in the subject line rather, as opposed to just hi. <laughs> um, but it was clear when I, once I opened the message that it was definitely him and you know there were enough specifics there. So he said, you know, I'd love to touch base with you within the coming week. Um, and he gave me the option of availability. Um, you know, when am I available? What platform? Now, uh, I pride myself as a boomer about being on almost every platform and bring, being pretty comfortable with all of them and tech savvy. Not everybody is, and it's not always generational. Um, you know, I also know younger people and even some Gen Zs who aren't always comfortable with uh, technology and all the stuff out there. But, you know, he gave me the option of what platform I wanted to use. Um, and that was great because a lot of times an old-fashioned phone call is perfectly fine. Uh, um, but some people are totally great with video conferencing. So I always say, you know, either by phone or video conference, um, whatever you prefer. Uh, if you're in this time of quarantine, like I used to say, you could, you could always give somebody a half hour for coffee. Um, I think in the time of quarantine, it's maybe best to just say 15 minutes to touch a base and chances are someone will give you longer. Um, one really bit of great advice, I actually used to share at more senior levels. It was a, a excellent European ambassador with whom I used to work when I was in the State Department. I was director for Western Europe. And he was from a small country and it was really hard for him to get these high level meetings with the Secretary of State or the Secretary of Defense. But what he would always do is ask for half an hour and oh, first he'd start with like 15 minutes and leave at 10 after 10 minutes. Then he'd ask for half an hour and leave at 20 minutes because everybody loves someone who knows how to, especially in US context, gets, and especially in DC, get straight to the point, um, ask what you've got to ask uh, or make your points and then don't take too much of their time, be respectful of their time. And it was great because here he was an ambassador of a fairly small country, but he could always get in the door because everyone knew he would just get straight to business and then not take up all their time. And believe me, if you're you know, Secretary of State or Secretary of Defense and you've suddenly got 10 extra minutes on your schedule, that is gold. Um, so people really appreciate it when you um, can be straight and concise and well organized. Like when I know that my former intern Andy and I talk with one another, he's got a set list of questions and he can give some of them to me in advance and I can be well prepared. I think with regard specifically to LinkedIn, um, when you're trying to connect with somebody who you, you know, you know, but you're not connected on LinkedIn, you know, just, just reach out and just use that, you know, that connect feature. I mean, um, I'll, if I can, I'm going to share my screen really quickly. So we have here, so this is, you know, somebody that I know who I am not connected to. I'm going to click on that connect button to see if that will help. Um, always, always, always add a note. If you hit done when you're trying to connect, it just does this generic like, hi, I'd like to connect with you on LinkedIn. When I receive that from somebody, that just tells me that it's, they either haven't taken the time or that it's spam, to be honest with you. When you add this note, you only have 300 characters. So this really needs to be, you know, short and sweet to the point. If I was, you know, sending a note to, you know, to Ken, you know, hi, Ken, you know, it's been a while since we've connected and I see we're not even connected on LinkedIn, you know, would, would, would love to be connected with you and then I'm going to send it. And then once I am connected with Ken, um, this message option is going to unlock and then we can message and we can have a more detailed conversation in that way. I think it's also important to point out with respect to groups, um, like Jane suggested joining groups. Um, when you join a group, you are able to message somebody within that group. You don't have to be connected with them one-on-one. -on -one. You'll be able to reach out to them just because of the, the notion that you are already connected by the nature of being you know, in, this, in this same group. Um, so those are ways that you can kind of do that, that, um, that work around in addition to trying to connect with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. So, Any other questions? You are welcome, Emmalyn. So, I think what you know, Jane was showing. What what I took away from that is that you know, there's a, very similar to resumes. There's you know, you talk to ten different people, you'll get ten different answers about resumes and the the LinkedIn profiles that she showcased. 
all had unique uh, features and all had unique presentations, but they all shared very similar standards with respect to they were robust and interactive um, and showed active participation on the person's part. Like, you know, I mean, I, I thought that Alex, um, you know, you can tell that he, in addition to receiving, you know, um, accolades from people is also reaching out to thank people and that, you know, kind of a, um, you know, foreshadowing to what we're talking about on Thursday with regard to networking. I mean, LinkedIn is, is a tool for, for networking and networking is about building relationships and that's a two way street. Um, and so you could, you could take that away from many of the profiles that were, that were being presented. Um, if anybody um, would like their profile to be reviewed, um, we now have, I feel like it should have been done before because I know I talk to students and alums all the time about LinkedIn. If you schedule an appointment with a career counselor in, uh, you know, in Handshake, you know, LinkedIn profile or LinkedIn assistance is now a specific um, appointment option that you can choose. So feel free to, to schedule that, that half hour appointment. Um, would be happy to, you know, look at your LinkedIn profile with you um, so that we can kind of critique and, you know, and, and work through it together. It's such a huge benefit of being a Davidson student. Um, and, um, and Kelly is a real expert on this. So please, you know, do go with her advice. Um, she really knows what she's talking about. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Well, I kind of guess without saying, but I wanted to say it anyway. But you know, I, I learn I learn from her, and I learn from others. And exactly what she was saying—that personal note on LinkedIn—I'm so glad you mentioned it because when I was on that panel with uh, Ambassador Jenkins, I reached out to her later on on LinkedIn, and I sent her this note and said, "I really enjoyed being on that panel with you. I learned so much. I'm really impressed with what you're doing with women of color advancing peace and security." And boom, we're connected. Yeah, and we've been going back and forth. It's really been fun. Yeah, I have noticed in this. Uh, COVID environment that, I mean, I've noticed an uptick in the amount of engagement that's taking place over LinkedIn. Um, I think because we're in this environment, we're really like this and I'm pointing at my laptop is really the only way that we can get that interaction going. Um, and so it, it, people are very receptive to, to to having people reach out to connect with them, to having people reach out to ask questions, um, just be engaging. I think is a way of looking at it is not a, you know, it's not a how many people can I connect with, how many jobs can I find. It's what's my level of engagement. Um, that's how you get the most out of the tool. Well, thank you everybody for coming, Kelly. Yeah. Thank you so much for setting all this up. Absolutely. And I encourage all of you, again, you know, reach out to Kelly and the, and the Career Center. Summer is a great time. Just have someone look over your stuff, even if you think you've got it, you know, in great shape. Um, it's always helpful to have another set of eyes. Happy to do that. Yes. So, okay. I will get the recording sent out to people today. Um, if you are inclined, please join us on Thursday for our final session. We'll be talking a little bit more about networking. I think that's a topic that everyone says, yeah, I know about it and yeah, I don't like it. And so let's just come and just kind of learn about the different aspects of networking and what that really means. Um, but in the meantime, I hope everybody has a good day. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.